Hey guys, Mike Moo here. I got a nice a question. I got a qu nice question this morning regarding uh, the removal K1. Some uh, Mr. Muhammad asked me, you know, what about the what about um, using the DJI Mobile version two of my Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus? Should I use that or should I use my removal K1? You can check check out that question there on um, on my video. And uh, you know, I wrote a, I wrote a quick response to it. And I'd say you have an S8 Plus. You spent maybe eight hundred dollars or something for it. The quality of the video and the photos is fantastic. Why would you go ahead and spend another four hundred dollars on the Remova K1 versus just getting the DJI Osmo 2? This is not the version two. This is uh, this is the Osmo Mobile, but basically version one. This is the M1 head on top of my Osmo handle. Why would you do that when you can just get the DJI Osmo Mobile version two, which is only $129 versus spending $429? Well, I gave a couple of reasons for that. Um, it, look at this. This is pretty much roughly the same size as the Mobile 2. I don't have the Mobile 2, but I've played around with it. And it is definitely more lightweight, um, less robust construction, but you know, more lightweight. Uh, well, for one thing, you have to supply the camera. And in this case, the camera is gonna be, you know, your smartphone or your mobile phone or something like that. Remember your mobile phone is roughly six to $800, especially if it's a S8 Plus. Uh, but with the S8 Plus, you also get the dual lenses. Right, so you can go ahead and zoom in there. You can also uh, you can also transfer the footage and upload it online just about immediately. Currently, remove a K1. You can't do that. You can record it. You can't stream live or anything like that. With a smartphone, of course, with the data plan, you can stream live. So you know if you need immediate immediate, and I do mean immediate uh, trans mission of your video footage out to wherever it is that you want to do it you want to share it immediately on social media you're definitely not going to beat the smartphone okay now the gimbal the problem with the gimbal is this uh it's profile just by default because it's designed to accommodate a wide variety of smartphones it's just going to be bigger and heavier there's just no way around that right now currently at especially at the 129 dollar price point this combination costs a, a bit more because i got the m1 head attached to my handle but the size is roughly the same you got to have the clamp that holds the camera right and then the smartphone pretty much the main size of the smartphone right is pretty much a screen and the cpu sensors and batteries and everything the k1 integrates everything all directly into this one nice sleek little unit which is super lightweight it's, I mean, just the, the camera itself, um, without counting for the camera on your smartphone, the Osmo Mobile 2 gimbal weighs one third more than the entire K1 and battery system uh, combined. Um, this is just by going on the specifications online. So that alone already weighs more. Uh, the second thing is, of course, you gotta, you gotta power the unit separately from your smartphone. So if you're gonna be using your smartphone all day, of course, that's gonna run the battery life quite a bit. Whereas with the K1 at 4K recording, you can operate that and the gimbal for a good three plus hours, four if you're recording in 1080p and not using the gimbal as much, of course, your mileage may vary. And so it's a lot more lightweight with the K1. It's a lot easier to travel. I can fit it in my bag. This, unfortunately, I can't fit it in my current favorite uh, travel bag right now easily without removing a bunch of the other stuff I like to carry. So this is the Peak Design Everyday Sling uh, 10 liter. It just doesn't fit well unless I take it apart. So with the, with this one, which is the M1, uh, and, and I'll talk more about the M1 la later, is that I can detach the head. And, and it's this metal piece, this head that's really, um, really heavy. Okay, so, so yeah, you get a nice lightweight camera. Um, and th this is just a lot more cumbersome to deal with. Uh, I, you gotta you gotta charge it separately, which is not that big of a deal with the with the mobile version two because the battery life is so much more improved now. Um, it's it's lighter weight, right? And it's it's all in one, ready to go at, at a moment's notice. With this, uh, if you're gonna be using or keeping your smartphone in your pocket, 
you're gonna have to take it out you're gonna have to clamp it out depending on which model you get you might have to balance it um, you also have with the mobile 2 you also don't get the benefit of the external mic slot right here you get that with the k1 so you can definitely improve the quality of your audio easily with the k1 by plugging into the mic input port so you don't get that uh, not 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 easily anyway you can kind of jury rig something and get better audio uh, for instance if I was using the mic me which is a $500 microphone which I, I did a little review it's two-part review on I can definitely get and synchronize better audio quality directly to your smartphone but it's a lot more cumbersome right uh, another major thing with it is that the K1 has a much wider angle than most smartphones and that's something that uh, you know may matter to you I, I think the K1 is very vlog friendly because it, it covers that wide range whereas let's just say with my iPhone 10 it has a roughly 35 millimeter wide angle view and in order to get something similar to the K1 uh, I gotta I gotta go ahead and stick on this uh, moment lens which is great by the way this moment lens on top of the case and then you know th and then go ahead and balance that and, and slide that on there uh, to get similar results so this combination is easily uh, let's see sixteen sixteen hundred dollars uh, plus the mobile two so seventeen seventeen hundred dollars and is the quality gonna be appreciably better than the k1 no it's not it's not but again, you, you get the versatility, right? So if you need that versatility, then that's something that uh, that you definitely uh, want to consider because, you know, you could always upgrade a camera, right? You just stick a different system on here. Whereas with the K1, you're stuck with a quality that you get and you can't, um, you can't upgrade that uh, later because it's non-detachable. You just basically got to get a whole new unit. Okay, so so that's that's another thing. Uh, I definitely like the wide angle more on the K1, but again with the S8 Plus or the iPhone 10, I can I can actually zoom in using the telephoto lens because I got two in one system uh, directly with the iPhone 10 or 8 Plus, 7 Plus, 6 Plus, you know any any number of those. So I can actually zoom in, and I, and I shared with you how the digital zoom looks like on the uh, the K1, and it actually is better than I thought it would be, but it's definitely not necessarily going to beat what you have here in good lighting conditions. In low lighting conditions, of course, with the iPhone 10, it actually uh, it actually picks whichever whichever one by itself, unless you use an app to manually choose it. So don't think that just because you got the two lenses on the iPhone 10, you're actually going to get the benefit of the optical zoom. And it looks okay on a phone, but once you view it full resolution, the quality isn't that awesome either. Okay, so so that's uh, that's another thing to consider. Uh, so some other benefits is that with the storage on the K1, I believe you can stick in a 64 or 128 gigabyte micro SD card. Uh, I know with the S8 Plus, you can also stick in your own micro SD, but I'm thinking comparably with some other phones that you might be using, you're you're kind of stuck with the memory that's already built in, so that's going to mess that up as well. Uh, I have the 256 gigabyte model, but if I'm always recording on this in 4K, I got to be wary about how much space I have left uh, on that. So that's another thing. All right. So the the benefits of of using this is is pretty obvious. Just with the mobile too, you got a 15 hour battery life, so you don't have to worry about the gimbal uh, being being. Uh, power hungry and with a mobile too it's the battery is so powerful that I believe you can even charge your mobile phone directly from the unit so it, it, it kind of helps with battery anxiety if you're out and about you can actually use multi-purpose use your gimbal uh, problem with the mobile too is that it doesn't break down really small okay it's it's one whole solid piece so in terms of portability and moving that around packing it around it's not that great also, this profile is a lot bigger. People will easily notice you carrying this thing around and, you know, with your phone. So if you want to be a little bit more discreet, the K1 is definitely a lot more of a casual device, whereas this thing, uh, this thing definitely screams someone's a little bit more serious in their recording. I would stand out a bit more. 
Whereas just with a K1, it effectively has the profile of basically this handle and basically a ball on top of it. So you can think of it even as small as a microphone. And you can even hold it like this and record it. So I definitely don't get noticed as much uh, using the K1 versus this and a smartphone on top. Another thing I've noticed if I'm using the main, if I'm using my main phone on a gimbal, is that you know for all the little notifications, all things that you want to check out on your phone, you can pretty much not be able to use uh, a good part of it easily because you know it's 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 just going to be on the gimbal doing its thing, and you're going to run the DJI uh, mobile, a uh, DJI Osmo mobile app. I forgot what it's called, DJI Go app, and that is uh, while it adds some features to the DJI mobile uh, version. Uh, such as active tracking, for instance, you you definitely have to consider your workflow if you're using the app to record because uh, for whatever reason it records the video. It doesn't record the video into the main location. It records it into the app and the container. This is probably something to do with Apple. It, it might it might not affect an Android version. I haven't used it. But it basically saves it within the app. And then if you want to move it to edit in some other applications, you got to export that to the photos library, hence taking up double storage, etc. That's an issue that I have on the iPhone version of the DJI Go app when I thought that was actually kind of annoying to do. Um, they do give you some uh, editing features, of course, on their app, but uh, but that that is definitely something um, to consider. But you can live stream directly from the app uh, to many different platforms. You definitely can't do that with the K1. Uh, with the K1, everything is, of course, uh, uh, recorded directly onto the micro SD card. You can transfer some of that footage later uh, using the app, and you know that could be useful. One thing that I found that is an issue with the K1 with the current firmware right now is that using the external, at least for the iPhone, using the external micro, uh, using external USB transfer cable or the SD card lightning transfer cable, it doesn't find any of the footage because it's not compatible right now with the system. Hopefully that get, that could be fixed up in a firmware. I don't know if it is going to be, but that is the current state of it right now. Keep in mind that the K1 that I'm using right now is, of course, a pre-release version. It's not the final version. The app is not the final version either. There is probably never a final version, so there's definitely going to be some updates on there. All right. But the main barrier you got to watch out for, of course, is the price. All right. You got the S8 already. $129 versus $429. So if that is going to matter for you, then obviously I'm going to say save your money. Okay. Uh, I, I suppose a lot of it depends on just how much video you plan on being recording. And, and I mentioned in, uh, in my comment reply is that, Hey, if you're looking, if you're even considering the K1, just buy both, just get the DJI mobile too, $129. And get the K1. Get them both. Figure out which one you're going to be using. I know if I'm going to be traveling with both my main phone and my K1, no question. I'm not going to use this. Uh, this the the uh, DJI Mobile uh, with my mobile phone most of the time, unless I I want to take advantage of converter lenses that that do uh, telephoto or some other zoom in type of thing. If I'm just doing regular vlogging and not zooming in on the footage, I'm going to use the K1 all the way because this is, this is really much more cumbersome. But do keep in mind that if you are getting the mobile two and you are using mobile lenses, you actually have to get, you know, counterweights in order to counter the additional weight of the, uh, the lenses that you stick on there. So it becomes even more cumbersome. If I'm going to be live streaming, Obviously, you don't have a choice. You're going to use your phone and a mobile too. If you want to post immediately without bringing, if you're if you're not traveling with a laptop and you want to post immediately, uh, you can technically do it. You want to get something else like the Narbox, which is a three hundred dollar device, let you 
uh, transfer on a go or maybe you need to figure out a way to hack it to transfer the footage uh, easily from the K1 let's say to my mobile phone to do some real on uh, some real on video editing so I honestly I'd say get both $129 really isn't that much and if you're thinking about the Osmo mobile 2 you know you can look look at the Zhiyun crane as well this is only $89 so 50% less and you know it's on sale all the time I, I forgot what the retail price is retail price is probably around $100 $120 but it's constantly on sale and this will work just fine with your Samsung Galaxy uh, S8 or S8 plus and will give you the stabilization I don't think the features are as advanced but is only eighty some dollars, so I'd say get the get get the K one and then get this in addition to it. So I I would say the only reason why you wouldn't get the K one if you were considering it is that three hundred. You know the the three hundred dollar difference is going to go directly into something that you are going to en, en, enjoy uh, more than you would with the uh, the the footage that you'll capture with the K one. All right, so there are some other benefits specifically with the Osmo versus the K1, okay? Uh, if you get the Osmo, just if you already have an Osmo, to, here's the other caveat. If you already have the Osmo and you're thinking about getting the K1, but you also want to get something to use with your phone, you know, you get the regular Osmo and then you get the M1 head. The M1 head right now is $129 uh, just about everywhere. I think it's going to be discontinued, unfortunately. So... You know, you're 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 spending the same hundred and twenty nine dollars, but with the M1 you get a lot more versatility because you can you can change the heads, right? This is interchangeable. The current system has the counterweight for the moment uh thing, so I could use the moment lenses with the counterweight um directly on here. I can attach and detach other specialized video accessories that you can't do on uh you know that that, that you can't do with the K1 because the K1 is designed to be a nice sleek all-in-one system that you don't need to attach many other things other than maybe a microphone. So I got this and I can attach the Z-axis head on top of that. So as you see, I, I can go ahead and attach this on top of this and get really super duper smooth footage whether I'm walking, shaking uh, in a car that I can't get with a K1 uh, because this, this is a counter stabilized thing and you know I'm, I'm just gonna get better footage I can use the remote access cable system and there's 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 more versatile attachment systems on here but I can I can take the head off I can actually take off the mobile to the M1 head and remotely control this so so the whole handle doesn't have to be out there but I can actually take this stick it on this this little extender head and stick it out else elsewhere and, and put the put the DJI Osmo uh, 4k camera head somewhere else and and even with this system I can even even control it with the uh, with the mobile phone access remotely well at least as long as this cable goes right so I, I can control this whole thing uh, separately far away while well it's, it's attached to my head right so I, I i have that it's definitely more versatile if you really need to get a very specialized shot and it needs to be in such an area that you can't easily do that with the k1 you know you definitely get more versatility with the dji solutions out there so if you're more of a casual user, of course, um, the K1 is definitely better. All right, another thing that you need to consider too is that when you're using the DJI Mobile 2 uh, with your S8 or your iPhone, and you're wanting to make use of that 4K image sensor on the back, you can't actually see what you're recording because you're gonna have to flip around this way in order to use the back camera. So if you're recording yourself, for instance, if you're a vlogger and you know, you're know you recording yourself, you obviously can't see that because uh, the screen's facing the opposite way. You don't have that problem with the K1. And 
I, I would say that that is a huge deciding factor for you and, and one of the main reasons why the K1 definitely stands out uh, amongst everything else because you have that screen and, and it's it's so useful to be able to see that. It's kind of like, you know, with a Canon, the Canon camera is a 70D, you know, Casey Neistat uses the 70D uh, for a really long time. You got that nice flip out screen on that. You get that you get that screen with the K1 and you don't get that with any of the mobile phone solutions, unless you're recording with a front facing camera. If you're recording front facing camera, you're not getting a 4K and I suppose you don't care anyway. Yeah. All right, so hopefully that answers your questions. I think I covered uh, most of the things that, um, the reasons why you want to get the K1 and use that instead of just getting the mobile two. But I'm, at, of course, like I said before, I'm advocating for you to just, just get both of them. Right, try it out. You got 30 days to uh, return. I, I, I have my affiliate links down below that go to Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything more or less. And you try it out. You you let me know what you think. Um, but I'm willing to bet that between the two of them, you're, you're going to take out the K1 uh, more than you will be um, with the mobile two head and your, and your smartphone. But really, the tool is, the best tool is the one that you have with you. And you're always going to have the mobile phone with you. You're not always going to have the mobile two with you though. With a K1, I can easily stick in my bag. And so that's a lot more easier to carry around than to have to deal with this hot mess of the head <laughs> attaching, attached to the handle that is the mobile two. All right, that's it for this long rant. It's gone 20 some minutes. I think I covered just about all the points uh, that, uh, that you might want to consider uh, for that question. Please like and subscribe. I am still short of 1,000 subscribers right now and I'd really want to hit that hit that part uh, as soon as possible um, so that I can uh, keep producing videos for you and answer all your questions and, and be able to spend more time uh, talking about tech and all the things that that you know we both love because obviously you're watching this video and, and I obviously produce a lot of videos that uh, are interested, interested, interesting to you in the tech space. All right, thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.